Let's look at the process for fitting an ARIMA model in Fable. Firstly, we'll summarize the traditional way that ARIMA modeling has been done for the last 40 or 50 years. The idea is you first plot the data and make sure everything looks okay, that there's no unusual observation or weird things happening. If you need to, you might at that point transform the data, taking a logarithm or a box box transformation so that the variance is stable, that leads to a simpler model. And then if the data are non-stationary, you would then take first differences of the data until the data becomes stationary. And then you'd have a look at the ACF and the PACF and you would choose a model. It might be an ARP model or it might be an MAQ model. You can't choose a mixed model with both P and Q greater than zero if you're just using the ACF and PACF to choose the model. You have to choose either an autoregressive model or a moving average model. And then once you've chosen your sort of starting model, you would then try to modify the model to see if you could do something better using Akaiki's information criterion or a variation on it. We're going to use the AICC. So you might increase the order and decrease it, and that's where you can try mixed models. And then once you've got a model that you think is good, you would check the residuals, uh, plot the ACF, you do a portmanteau test of some kind, such as a long box test. And if everything looks okay, you go ahead. If things don't look okay, you might go back and try some more model variations. When you finally get a model you're happy with, you calculate the forecasts. So that's the process. In Fable, we make that much simpler by removing some of the middle steps. So you still have to have a look at the data and see if you want to do a box box transformation. But then you just can use the ARIMA function to automatically choose a model. And once you've got your chosen model, you still need to check it that it looks like it satisfies the assumptions. You might try a modified model, but most of the time the model that gets chosen for you is actually pretty good. And then you calculate the forecast. So it simplifies the procedure. Let's, get a, let's try this on a data set, both using the sort of the more manual way of choosing a model and using an automatic process uh, and see what differences it comes up with. So uh, before I do that, though, just put that process in a flowchart form in case that's easier to follow. So you'll see that some of the steps are exactly the same. You plot the data, um, looking for unusual observations and understanding what's going on. You do the box Cox transformation. And then if you follow the manual route, you go down this left-hand side and do the differencing, plot the ACF. You might go backwards and forwards a few times, trying to find a model that works. Um, and when you've got something that works, you then go ahead and do the forecasting. And if you go down the right-hand side, which is the automatic process that's built into Fable, uh, it automatically bypasses some of these steps so that you can just find the model directly. Okay, now for the example. So I'm gonna take an example of export data from the Central African Republic. So this is exports as a percentage of GDP. Um, and you can see what the data looks like. It's uh, sort of trending downwards, but with some uh, ups and downs over time. And uh, we want to find a model for that. So using the manual process, you have to decide, do you want a box Cox transformation? No, that looks fine. Uh, there's no obvious changes in variance. So let's leave it, the transformation part out of it. Then you decide how many differences do you need to do to make it stationary? So if we take a difference, um, a single difference, we get that. And I'm piping it into GGTS display so that I can see the ACF and PACF of the difference data. Um, that looks, looks stationary, so I think we're okay with that one. And then you look at the ACF and PACF to try to guess a model. Either one side or the other, but not both. So let's start on the ACF side. You're looking for the last significant spike. So that's that one. If we, on the ACF side, then we're picking an MA model. So you'd say, well, that looks like an MA model um, with Q equals uh, three, because that's the third spike. Um, and so your, your P is equal to zero. And we've done one difference. So your, um, so it's an ARIMA, put in the rest of these things here. So that's an ARIMA zero, one, three. If you look on the other side, again, you're looking for the last significant spike. We find it here. So it's the second one. So, so that suggests um, 
an arima uh, with p equals two. Um, we've got the one difference that we did at the top of the screen. And if you're on this side, you choose q equals zero. So we have two possible models that are suggested from this example using the manual approach to finding a model, either an arima 013 or an arima 210. So let's try those. So we take our data set, pull out the uh, Central African Republic, um, and we fit the first two models are the two that I just identified, the 210 and the 013. So you just use the notation PDQ, and then in brackets, the value of P, the value of D, and the value of Q. And you can call them whatever you like, but to make it easy to remember, I'm calling it an ARIMA 210 and an ARIMA 013, so I, I remember what the model is. The next two lines do the automated procedure. They're bypassing all of that manual stuff and just saying, well, you tell me what the model is. And we're going to use two different variations on it. I'll explain the differences between these later. So the first of them is called stepwise. It uses a stepwise procedure to choose a model. So you just give it the, the column and let it choose a model. And then the second one, we're using a variation on that where you don't do stepwise selection. So I'm calling that search. Um, so we take the fitted models and we just have a look to see what it's come up with. And so you can see there's the two that I manually chose from the graphs. And the next two are the ones that it's automatically chosen. Firstly, using the stepwise procedure, it's come back with a 212. And then the fourth one, it's come back with a 310 using a searching procedure. Both of them are different from what I had identified just looking at the ACF and PACF plots. For a start, the, this one um, is different because it uses P and Q values that are non-zero. It's not possible to do that manually, to automatically, to manually identify a model with a P greater than zero and a Q greater than zero just by looking at the ACF and PACF. But if we use the automatic procedure, it can do that. And the second one, the bottom one down here, it's actually found a relatively simple model. It's an AR3 after differencing. That's, but it's not one that I identified from looking at the graphs. So the next question is, well, which of those is the best and which of them should we use? So we can take the, uh, the resulting models. We can use the glance function to compute things like ARCC statistics. Um, and then we can order them by the, which is the smallest at the top and the largest at the bottom. And then I'm just selecting some of the columns so it doesn't go off the screen. And the interesting column, the one we're looking at here is the AICC column. Um, and you'll see they're all the same number to the, to the decimal places that are shown. Um, so that is to the nearest unit, they're the same number. The top one is slightly smaller than the others. They're not, if I, if I had some more decimal places, you could see the difference. But the, um, the search model, the one that it searched for actually comes up um, the best. And then the other three are a little bit worse than that. But there's so little difference that it won't really make any viable difference when we come to forecasting. Okay, so how did that all work? What was going on under the hood when we did the automatic thing? So this comes from a algorithm that I was involved in uh, developing with one of my PhD students, Yasmin Kandekar. And uh, she and I uh, tried a few different ways of automating the procedure. And this is the one that seemed to work best and the one that's now put into a lot of different software products. So for a non-seasonal ARIMA process, such as the ones we're looking at, we can write the model like this. There's a, there's a polynomial of AR parts of order P. So the P is, in, is inside there. There's the number of differences you want to do, which is the D. And then there's the MA part. So there's a polynomial of order Q in there. And we need to choose the P and the Q and the D and also whether or not we want the intercept or not, the C, inside the model. The way the algorithm works is that, first of all, it says, well, let's choose D, and it uses the KPSS unit root test that we discussed earlier in the book, uh, and it just finds how many differences are required um, until you get a uh, not significant result. And that gives us the KPSS, um, that uses the KPSS test to choose D. And then given that value of D, 
a tries variations of P and Q and whether or not the C is in the model or not to, and as it varies them, it's trying to minimize the AICC statistic. Of course, there's an infinite number of possible values of P, Q and whether or not C is in. So you can't look at all of the models. So it uses a stepwise search to traverse the model space. Now the stepwise search, um, be, uh, first of all, there's the AICC statistic. That's how it gets calculated. It's minus twice the log likelihood plus this penalty, uh, which is a large value if you've got a big model, big P and big Q, and you've got a constant in the model. Um, and it's smaller if you've got a, you know, a simpler, smaller model. The likelihood tends to get bigger when you've got a um, complicated model. So you get, because it's minus twice the log likelihood, you get a balance between you know, overfitting. If you overfit, then this term gets, um, gets really small negative, gets negative values, but this term here um, will grow and they balance each other out. So the stepwise procedure starts by fitting four simple models. Um, so given the value of D that you've chosen using the KPSS test, it fits an MA1 and an AR1, it fits neither, just a white noise to that, and then it fits a 2-2, an AR, an MA, sorry, an armor 2-2 to the different series. And then it picks the best of those, and then it just starts varying them. So it varies one of the P and the Q up or down by one, um, or both of them up and down by one. Um, and if it has the constant in it, it leaves it off. If it hasn't got it in it, it puts it in. So it just tries these little variations that are neighboring models, not too different from the one that's currently the best. So in that sense, it's a greedy search. Um, and it and it will stop when it gets to when it can't find a better model from the current best model that it's found. So sometimes helps to think about this graphically. So here's graphically what's going on. So these dots represent all of the possible models um, up, to, when up to a maximum of six in either direction. And the four that it starts with are these orange ones. So it starts with the simple zero, zero model, then an MA1 and an AR1, and then the ARMA22. And it fits those four and it finds the best one. Now suppose the best one happened to be to be this spot here. So then it says, okay, now is there a neighboring model that's better? So the neighboring models are those ones, they're just nearby, where you just reduce the values of P and Q by one. So it looks around those ones and it says, oh, this one here is better than the one I had before. So it tries this one. Then it says, are there any neighboring models of that one that are better than what I've already seen? So it doesn't need to look at these ones again. It just has to look at these ones now, because these are new neighbors. So it looks at those ones and says, are any of those ones better? Sure enough, this one turns out to be slightly better. So then it says, well, what about the neighbors of that? So it looks at the neighbors of that, but none of those are better. And so it sticks with the final best model that it found. Notice that it's never looked at all of the ones that are still in gray. It's possible that one of the ones still in gray are actually a better model, than the one that it found because it was only looking at neighbors. So this stepwise procedure is not guaranteed to give you the best model, but it hopefully will give you a, a good model. The alternative, if you say stepwise equals false, then rather than do it in this stepwise fashion, it'll look at all of the possible models up to a maximum order. So in this space, um, it'll look at, if your maximum order was six, for example, it will look at all of the models in this upper left triangle because all of them have P plus Q less than or equal to six. So you set the upper order and it'll look at all of the models up to that upper order. That's how stepwise works. And you can change the upper order if you want. So when we did this, um, the stepwise procedure chose the 0, 1, 3 model, but the non-stepwise procedure uh, this last model, chose a 212 model. So it was a model that it hadn't actually looked at when it did the stepwise, but it turns out that it was slightly better. Um, okay. Now let's take the best model that we just found, uh, the one that I labeled search, the 212 model, and have a look at the residuals. 
So these look okay. They look like white noise. There's no obvious patterns in the time plot. All of the ACF spikes are inside the critical values. The residuals look sort of vaguely normal. There's not a lot of data here, so it's hard to tell, um, but close enough. Uh, we can also do a test, the portmanteau test, a long box type test on whether the this collection of spikes as a group, whether this collection of spikes is significant or not. Um, now, we do something slightly different for ARIMA models than we've done for other models in the book. Um, you can get a more accurate portmanteau test if you adjust the degrees of freedom to take account of the number of parameters in the model. We haven't used this in any other model framework. But for RIMA models, it's been shown mathematically that you can get a slightly better portmanteau test if you do this adjustment. So we're going to use, um, we're going to count how many AR and MA parameters are in the model and use that in our Lungbox um, code. So this is what it looks like. It's exactly the same as what you've seen before. You augment the data, um, you pull out the model you're interested in, um, we grab the innovations column, we do the Lungbox test, uh, we set the maximum number of lags, which is 10. This is a non-seasonal data set, so we usually use 10. The new thing is this part here. We're going to say how many um, how many degrees of freedom have there been in this model? So if you look back to the model, back here, it has a three, one, zero. Um, so there's three degrees of freedom. There's three parameters that have been estimated because P plus Q is equal to three. So we set degrees of freedom equals to three. Um, and we look at the results and the p-value is pretty large. So we say there's not any significant difference between what we're seeing here and, and white noise. Um, and so we can go ahead and use this model for forecasting. So then we take the model, um, we do the forecast. I'm just going to pull out the, the resulting forecast from the best model, the search model, and, and show them. And you can see that it, you know, it's not very interesting forecast. They're pretty close to the last observed value of the series. They're not quite um, the same as that, but they're pretty close. And in fact, if I'd used any of these models, I would have got something very, very similar to this picture. The, the, there'd be slightly different values for the blue, but maybe not even visible to the to the naked eye, and slightly different prediction intervals, but again, probably nothing that you would really notice. Um, because the AICC values were also close, we know that this is going to give us pretty similar uh, forecasts uh, for any of the four models that we've looked at in this section.